Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the continuity of composite functions. Before we look at our example problem, I would like to take a few minutes to talk about continuity. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is continuity? In simple terms, a function is continuous when it has no holes, jumps, or gaps in its output. This means that if you were to graph it, it could be graphed entirely without having to lift your pencil. However, we can also define continuity more formally by saying that a function is continuous at c if it meets the following criteria. First, f of c is defined. This deals with holes in our function's output, as it ensures that a value exists at the given value of c. Second, the limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist. This helps to deal with gaps and jumps in our function's output, as it ensures that we approach the same value from the left and right sides of c, and it ensures that there is no unbounded behavior occurring at c. Third, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. This deals with sudden jumps, where the limit may be 2, but the actual output is 5 at the value of c. If all the criteria are met, then a function is continuous. So now, let's talk about how continuity affects composite functions. The first thing to consider is that when you are composing compo er, functions, you must consider how the domain of each function will affect the continuity of the composition. In other words, in order to compose f of c with g of c, and get a continuous output, g must be continuous at c, and f must be continuous at g of c. So now, let's talk about our example problem, which is, discuss the continuity of f composed with g of x, where f of x equals 1 over x, and g of x equals x squared minus 1. The general process that I would utilize when solving a problem like this is to first determine whether g of x has domain issues. Second, I would determine whether the composition of f g of x has domain issues. Third, I would determine the interval or intervals for which f g of x is continuous. For step one, we need to determine whether g of x has domain issues. The first thing we need to do in order to determine this is to figure out what type of function g of x is. So, let's look at the function's definition, which is g of x equals x squared minus 1. It's fairly easy to see that this function is quadratic in nature. So now, we need to determine if this type of function has domain issues. Because it is quadratic, it has no domain issues. Thus, the function g of x has no domain issues. For step two, we need to determine whether the composition f composed with g of x has domain issues. So again, we first need to determine what type of function this is. So, we're going to start by looking at the composed function, which is 1 over x squared minus 1. In this case, our composed function is a rational function. So next, we need to determine if this function has domain issues. Because it is a rational expression, or rational function rather, it does have domain issues. Specifically, it has domain issues at its vertical asymptotes and at any holes which it may have. For the last step, we need to determine what interval or intervals the composed function is continuous on. Because it is rational, we can do this by looking for its vertical asymptotes. So, the first thing we need to do is expand the denominator. Since the denominator was a difference of squares, we can write it as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Because neither of these are removable discontinuities, both of these are vertical asymptotes. Specifically, we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Thus, f composed with g of x is continuous for all values of x such that x doesn't equal negative 1 or 1. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.